Hello everyone. Um, something I've not talked about yet on my blog, and um, it's a love of mine. Sometimes it's an indulgence, sometimes it becomes a necessity for me, is um, coffee. And my history with coffee is that um, I didn't start drinking it seriously until after college when I worked at Starbucks. Um, they kind of gave me an intro to coffee um, and with the right guidance alongside, you know, the basic tools, I became interested in uh, rare coffees, but also, you know, not, not everything that's expensive is good and not everything and, and vice versa. Um, the first coffee that I'm reviewing for you is from my favorite roaster called Dragonfly. Um, they operate solely on the internet, and it is their espresso um, blend, espresso crema dolce. Um, I will drop a link to it. Uh, it's, it doesn't really sell out. There are rare coffees on that site that are more expensive that do sell out or have limited runs. Um, but basically, I will show you, and... So, the way I prepared this was on the stovetop, um, with a percolator, a stovetop, Italian, um, forgetting the name, uh, Bialetti, and basically you tamp the grounds, um, you put water in the bottom chamber, I tried to put it, or I put it on the lowest heat possible, um, there is milk and sugar in this, and Basically, my my basic prognosis of this one is um, when it cools down a little bit, it gets better. It is it's good. It's full bodied. Um, cream and sugar in it go really nice. You can drink it black. There is a bit of an aftertaste or a bit of a sourness to it, and um, and I don't think that I would have just uh, become biased. I've read reviews on this and. Um, I think without even reading the reviews, I would have felt this way. Um, and, I mean, the only other thing I want to say about coffee in general, because I feel like this is just an introductory video, um, is that, for me, so you understand where I'm coming from, uh, I'm very, I'm much more partial to light roasts. Dark roasts um, tend to, in my opinion, cover up the natural flavor of the bean. And not only do I like light roasts, but, you know, a lot of coffee is washed by acid. It is, it washes off the fruit. It, um, I'm not going to say it disinfects it, but it, it's probably killing m organisms in it, and um, they're... You know, the traditional way of preparing coffee before it's roasted is drying it in the sun. Um, coffee originated in Africa, in Ethiopia, from what we understand, and the Yerga Chefa is a, an example of a natural processed coffee that's roasted lightly. And what you get from that is complex flavor. Um, you get the fruit tastes, um, because there's fruit attached to it. You get a more tea-like coffee. Um, and there's, you know, there's nothing wrong with this espresso either. I'm not, I'm not totally opposed to medium or dark roast. Um, but, again, uh, when it comes to the, the tasting wheel, and like wine, in coffee there's a flavor wheel, and there are more flavors on that wheel than there is for wine. Um, it's really, you know, an ultra-valuable coffee is not going to be washed over with acid. It's going to be uh, either naturally dried in the sun, processed with honey, um, and some of that fruit is going to stay intact with it. Um, maybe not always, but generally speaking. And ultra-rare, or... One of the most rare varieties of coffee that is sought after is called a geisha, um, which is grown in certain 
elevation conditions, um, mountains, I believe, and, uh, ultra, you know, the, these coffees, again, are, you want to get closest to the way that the bean was when it was first picked, uh, so, you know, that's, I mean, you can only talk so logically through something that, you know, I, I like the way that light, light roast tastes better. Um, and yeah, that's my introductory vlog for you on coffee.